Hi all, I have another amazing game, Stockfish 9 against Leela, ID 11250. So this is one of the strongest of the first generation network that was trained. Uh, so this is from David Grosvenor. So standard fast and furious time control, 40 moves per two minutes with a two second increment per move. So it's a kind of intuition test. The book moves given C4 B6. D4 bishop b7. So this is the end of the book. So Leela playing with this just fianchetto here of the queen's bishop. We have knight f3, e6, e3, knight f6, bishop d3, and now d5. C takes d5. Uh, there's actually a very high level stem game from this position with b3, which occurred in. Kramnik against Kasparov played in Moscow 2001 that ended in a win for Gary Kasparov in 55 moves from here maybe that can be the subject of a separate video but you can see that game in the pinned comments of this video so in this game we have c takes d5 e takes d5 so this move in comparison to Kramnik's gives black it seems a good grip on the e4 square Okay, so knight c3, bishop d6, b3, and now we have a6, white castles, knight bd7, bishop b2, queen e7, bishop f5, leader castles, knight d2, knight fd2, rook fe8. So you can see that black is kind of gearing up a lot of pieces for that e4 square in this position so uh, let's see you know uh, the bishop there's the knight there's the queen all sort of over protecting here that e4 square uh, so we have uh, g3 knight e4 now this is really quite interesting establishing a pawn on e4 instead why is this important? Well, if white takes, it does establish a pawn, which white did. Knight c takes, e4, d takes. So what is this pawn doing? Well, it's eyeing that sensitive f3 and d3 squares. But f3 could be very important. It's like a, an interesting pawn wedge, which can reduce counterplay sometimes. If a blockade can be set up on d5, then this bishop is going to be kind of hemmed in as well. So it's play against this bishop, it's play against the king side potentially, because this uh, is often the prelude, this overprotecting e4, often the prelude to a king side attack. But isn't there a downside exploited here immediately by Stockfish? Knight c4, yeah, that pawn has neglected the c4 square, is losing the dark square bishop a big deal. Knight f6, we have here bishop h3, and now bishop d5. The knight's not taking on d6 at the moment. We have queen c2, and now it's really encouraged to take on d6. And what we know from many Leela games is that sometimes she deliberately swaps off a bishop uh, for a knight to get pressure on the other color complex. So the light squares could actually be feeling more pressure. And you might wonder why this is the case here. So knight takes d6 was played. Uh, playing anything else seems a bit silly. Uh, say knight a5, then black can get on thing with things like h5. This position, for example, this is a fictional scenario. Uh, black can end up quite nice in this uh, scenario, for example, like this, using the h pawn, using the a file as an example with an advantage. So, anyway, knight takes d6, c takes d6. So if you look at this now, there's a this bishop is hemmed in. The light squares do seem to be under even more greater grip because the absence of that knight, yeah, that was actually hitting some light squares. So black seems very dominant on light squares from this position. It's almost as if you know white hasn't got too much counterplay. F three has been ruled out. Classic breaks have been ruled out, which is one of the points of overprotecting a central point. We have rook f c one. Now a5, this is very interesting on the queen side, restraining potentially on the queen side activities. Bishop c3, h5 now going for an attack. It seems this is a, a position where white has not got too much counterplay. 
this bishop needs to prove itself in this pawn structure it seems very difficult to do that bishop g2 and there's a lack of breaks here pawn breaks for white b4 bishop d2 so keeping an eye on these two pawns so maybe a3 is the one pawn break white could look forward to but queen e6 shuts down that putting pressure on b3 there's no a3 here the queen could also slip into f5 sometimes down to hit f2 we have h3 g6 with possibilities of king g7 and later maybe h4 and rook h8 h4 pretty committal move you might wonder why because isn't this asking for g things like g5 later once you play h4 and what about the g4 square well I've checked this out if Queen d1 as an example black could actually pursue the light squares here with h4 for example this is just a fictional example the knight coming to g5 say look at that pressure on f3 and just playing for f5 now and if any pressure any further pressure is needed here uh, just just to sh just to show this on the board I've noticed actually that there is the possibility of black intensifying things even further get the king safe and then key maneuver here against light squares which is basically to make use of this bishop with bishop b7 would be a key maneuver going to a6 this would be absolutely devastating for white for example like this and now knight f3 this is absolutely crushing stuff it just can't be permitted uh so yeah it seems h4 is is a move in a bad position so king g7 was played already it seems black can also concretely consider g5 here for example this knight h7 here queen g6 protecting h5 ready for knight takes g5 again and any activity with a3 can be answered with a4 here this is a very powerful response to get a protected past pawn all the time and then carry on on the king side so king g7 was played instead that's the more violent move g5 but it's put on hold for a moment queen d1 rook eba again putting things on hold for the moment just making sure white is really tied down here you can see that exchange of the knight for bishop seemed to really take the life out of white's position especially on the light squares the grip here on light squares is just enormous and if if you look at this this is on both sides of the board there's there's huge pressure so um here bishop e1 was played uh so rook e b8 you might wonder about rook e b8 was that necessary if queen f5 that's an idea as well because there's always knight g4 and then a4 again as a response so this is this is just a very good position for black generally so anyway white preempted knight g4 and queen f5 it seems holding f2 there queen f5 queen c2 and now ripping things up with g5 white is just so passive here the overprotection affords this of e4 the queen is not needed to protect e4 here when it's dragged away for a moment king f1 and white sits helplessly now rook h8 with h4 coming in there's just no counterplay the one point to attack is attacked though queen c7 that is protected there's no point taking here by the way that that would seem uh, a, a very bad idea to take here because things like check win the queen tactically so there's actually no loose pawn here at the moment so rook c2 we have rook d7 kicking the queen now to b6 h4 just carrying on with things rook c7 and now h3 form pawn time bishop e h1 this bishop is an unfortunate <laughs> uh, piece here bishop e6 ready to kind of chat mate the bishop on h1 via bishop g4 to f3 rook takes we have bishop takes and you might wonder here what about the d6 pawn well bishop takes have a look at this if queen takes d6 this wasn't played but there's bishop b5 check or there's queen b5 check and it turns out actually queen b5 check 
is even stronger than bishop b5 check because of h2 bishop h3 knight g4 check and queen f1 <laughs> checkmate so the b this diagonal is is uh an undertone to the game it's very very dangerous this diagonal generally it seems uh so a4 is played at least ruling out the use of the b5 square uh, we have queen d5 just sitting on the white position here now though so officially protecting d6 holding e4 looking at b3 this dark square bishop is the real prisoner bishop of this game throughout this black's pieces are not a prison in the pawn structure but that bishop certainly is bishop d2 we have h2 now the king makes a run for it on king g2 obviously this looks dangerous but is it just check bishop h3 check bishop g4 check bang rook takes check and a mating will follow so white sits here helplessly devoid of any counterplay bishop g4 queen b5 the bishop is checkmated on h1 <laughs> with bishop f3 there's nowhere for that bishop to go white desperately plays bishop takes b4 so we have queen takes a takes and the game ended here of course black's totally winning for example like this and then just carry on winning even more material there's total devastation this game absolutely crushing with no counterplay so i'll take you back to the final position this desperate <laughs> finally the prisoner pieces is, is just offered up it's just so hope hopeless the position so i thought this was an instructive game basically this is like an exaggeration of light square play just giving up a dark square bishop and not so much an explosion of counterplay on of a play on light squares but a gigantic grip iron grip on all the light squares with with the bishop on the dark square being the prisoner in its own dark square pawn prison it seems so very very interesting what happened in this game how the counterplay was really removed and also even the queen side had relevance having the pawns here had flexibility for some of the diagonals and none of the black pawns seemed to be in trouble at all because of tactical reasons a lot of the time so i hope you enjoyed that one comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much